Okay, folks, it's your buddy Mike Messier. Just saw Oppenheimer or Oppenheimer or Oppie. Uh, so, serious subject matter, folks. First of all, should you see this film? Should you not? I think you should. I would give it a big double thumbs up. Uh, cinematography, acting is par excellence. Um, so, yeah, a really great epic film. Probably an Oscar contender. I'm sure it is already. Uh, for, for best actor, best, uh, I guess it's an uh, adapted screenplay, best picture, best director for Christopher Nolan, best, best, best. Uh, I'm sure Robert Downing Jr. Uh, will be up for best supporting actor. And Six Degrees of Separation, I've actually worked with Jason Clark uh, and spent time with him in an SUV many years ago. So he's a nice gentleman, nice to see him in this high profile role as the prosecutor. Now I'll get into some of the dirty details. First of all, uh, I do want to give a shout out to somebody on Facebook. One of my 2,500 or so Facebook connections made a post, a non-spoiler post that said there's an extra scene after the credits of Oppenheimer. So I'm sitting in a the theater no, no more than 10 minutes ago, watching the end credits, waiting for this bonus scene. And then the fucking movie, the, the credits stop and the lights go on in the house. So I guess in Jacksonville, they don't honor all these hardworking people that worked on this film. They don't want to give them the fucking time of day. They want to fucking stop the movie. I don't know if they're saving on the electric bill or whatnot. But as a film pro, uh, enjoyer, as someone who makes films, writes films, acts in films, I'm a bit offended, AMC Jacksonville, Regency Plaza, don't stop the goddamned movie in the middle of the credits. It's disrespectful to all the people that worked on the film and this bonus scene, <coughs> I'll never fucking see it unless they go see the movie again, which I probably will. Uh, within five minutes of this movie starting, <coughs> I said to myself, I'm probably gonna see this again. It just, and I'll, I'll make some comparisons here. If you've seen the movie, you'll probably enjoy this movie review more than if you haven't. You might want to go see the movie first. Bookmark me. Come back to me and watch the rest of the goddamn review. Uh, what do I remind? What What does this movie remind me of? The movie JFK by Oliver Stone, uh, 30 years ago. Oddly enough, I never saw the movie JFK until uh, the night uh, before Donald J. Trump was uh, sworn in. To office. Interesting stat, in fact, huh? I never watched the movie JFK. It slipped through my fingers like so much pixie dust until the night before Trump got put in office. And then I was all kind of fucked up about it because I'm like, if, if JFK got wiped out, what's going to happen to this guy? You see what I'm saying? But in any event, uh, some assholes honking. Now he's parking. Uh, imagine that, people parking in a parking lot. So, anyway... I did, uh, you know, this is Wednesday, whatever the fuck, the 26th of July, July, uh, by the way, just found out that Sinead, sh stop it, okay, just found out that Sinead O'Connor has passed away, that's sad to see, uh, so what else, um, this movie, the, the funny thing is, I know I've seen this lead actor guy, the guy that actually plays Robert J. Oppenheimer, I, stop with the goddamn honky. I know that I've seen him before, but I couldn't place his face. And when the end credits came, I don't want to say his name wrong. Was it Christian Willie? Christian Wiley? What the fuck has he been in? I mean, I'm sure he's been in some big time shit that I just can't remember. Now the birds are cackling. You'd think that this was outdoors or something. Um, but yeah, I, I went to see this movie on a Wednesday matinee. I know this is a Barbenheimer week or whatever the fuck. Uh, I saw Barbie last Friday, which was kind of opening night or second night. And I, I this has been selling out, Oppenheimer. And Barbie's been getting big crowds. Sound of Freedman. God, I keep saying it wrong. Sound of Freedom has been getting big crowds all, all along. Uh, but I wanted to have a nice seat. I wanted to wait until I had the mental focus. I've actually had tickets for this Oppenheimer twice. On the AMC app, I rescheduled, I rescheduled until today. I wanted to have daylight time. I, I'm on an early morning schedule these days. I'm waking up at the crack of dawn uh, to beat the heat. 
and uh, to get things accomplished. And I said, I'm gonna go see this movie at 2.30 in the afternoon, which is what I just did, in order that I have my full synapses available. Uh, interesting, I felt like the 90s again. Florence uh, Pugh, I believe is her name. You might remember her from playing Paige, the woman wrestler in Fighting With My Family. And of course, she's done all the other big movies. She had a big movie last summer, the controversial one with Harry Styles and this one and that one and the people, you know, spitting on each other or whatever the fuck. Uh, I can't even remember what that was called. It doesn't even seem like a great movie anymore. But Florence Pugh, who's coming on strong as an actress in recent years, uh, doing some goddamn nudity. So, I mean, you haven't seen that from an A-list actress in some time. But I guess she does it for her art ladies. So that, let that be a lesson to you. Uh, but anyway, I mean, that was a surprising thought or a surprising scene. I'm sure the internet will be ablaze with all you de degenerates with your still frames and your uh, so forth, you sickos. Uh, but yeah, so that was nice, interesting. Didn't know that Oppenheimer was such a ladies' man. He's banging one chick, he's got another. He's making a woman divorce her husband. Of course, uh, she apparently had been married three times previous, so she dumps her current, you know, academia old man husband and, and, and gets knocked up by Oppenheimer. So that was a wonderful surprise. Uh, the scientific community, I guess all these guys uh, score chicks, uh, you know, because they're all so brilliant. They, they fuck well or whatever the fuck. But uh, nice to see uh, this guy had a personal life. He wasn't just, you know, fucking running his chalk against a chalkboard. He was uh, uh, fucking, okay, having sex with gorgeous women, at least uh, as portrayed in this film. Emily Blunt, Florence Pugh, what a, what a tandem. Uh, so what else? Robert Downey Jr. Now, this is when you start to feel a little old. When you start seeing guys like Robert Downey Jr., you know, because uh, when I was a child, he was doing things like Less Than Zero when he was playing like a strung out 18-year-old on drugs. Uh, that song, uh, Less, uh, what was that song? Hazy Shade of Winter by the Bengals. What a song that was. If you've never heard it, go listen to it. Put it on your YouTube music playlist or your whatever the fuck playlist. Uh, Hazy Shade of Winter by the Bengals. Less than zero if you want to see an early uh, movie with Robert Downey Jr. A great movie. Julie, uh, J Jamie Gertz, Andrew McCarthy, and so forth. Um, but yeah, so basically Robert Downey Jr. is now playing like an old guy. You know, uh, uh, old guy, politician, asshole guy. And it's like, man, wasn't it just a hiccup ago that Robert Downey Jr. was redeeming his career with Iron Man? And then before that, wasn't he on, um, was it uh, Felicity or something? Not Felicity, the one, the fucking, the skinny woman, the woman that was so thin, we were all concerned about her on that fucking hour long show that I never watched. She was thin and it was a, it was a dancing baby graphic. I never watched the show, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, what was it? Wasn't Felicity, was it? Or was it? I guess it fucking was, but whatever the fuck. I mean, the guy's been through ups and downs all arounds, and here he is. Uh, he also did a movie with James Woods that was kind of interesting, True Believer. Uh, I met James Woods briefly at a Providence uh, Civic Center. The, the Providence Bruins were playing hockey, and James Woods, I believe, was with a grandchild, and he was a nice guy to me. Yes, I know, hashtag uh, Twitter, whatever the fuck, but he was nice to me for two seconds, what can I tell you? Um, but Robert Downey Jr., Doing a great job, as always. Um, like I said, Jason Clark, nice to see him. I'm sure a lot of you people don't know who that is. He's the guy that plays the prosecutor, and he was in the movie, uh, he was in the TV series, I should say, Providence, uh, which was actually, no, I'm sorry, Brotherhood. Why am I sorry to you? I'm providing all this goddamn information. You should be thanking me. He was in the show Brotherhood, season two, episode one. I was actually a stuntman on that fucking episode. Annabelle Gish, very gorgeous woman, was there. Uh, the other Jason, Jason, uh, what was his name? There was two Jasons that starred in that show. Jason Clark was the one that was just in this movie. 
The other guy was like a big, he was like kind of like five foot ten, but he was all jacked up. He was a nice guy too. Jason Isaacs, wow, what a memory I fucking have. Not just for wrestling information that you can see on one pro wrestling and sports fan YouTube channel. If you happen to be a wrestling fan, you can go over there. If you happen to be a Mike Messier fan, stay here or do both. Or if you want to see my works of film, go to one man in a camera films eh, you buy my book uh, fighter play basketball or a distance from avalon or my film fucking production book support the goddamn channel so i can provide this wonderful swearing rants and anger for you uh what else so overall a big fucking movie now if you want to compare this what else can i say about this movie before we get into the barb and hyber shit um I do feel if there was one flaw in this film, at least as I saw it or heard it or didn't hear it, I did feel like there was some mumblefuck audio in this thing. I don't know if this is just the style of acting where the actors don't enunciate or they don't speak loudly because they know they have the best microphones, but I did struggle with some of the verbiage. Did anyone else have that problem or am I just going deaf? I couldn't hear all the goddamn words in this thing. I couldn't. Sometimes it just sounded like the, the actors were speaking too softly or maybe I have fucking wax in my brain, but I couldn't hear everything that I wanted to hear. Now there is a solution, Mikey. You can get like the deaf hearing set, but I'm not really deaf. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to take the hearing set from someone that really needs it. They do have these open captions. Uh, some of these screenings now you might see listed on your app, uh, your application thing on your phone open captions which means everyone whether you're deaf or not can read the fucking captions across the screen uh, and follow along in real time with the words and guess what i think the next time i see this movie uh if i don't see it in imax i don't know if they do open caption for imax they might they may they will i don't know i will go see this with open captions so i can read all the fucking words and hear every goddamn thing in my own inner ear reading myself the movie that I'm watching it because I couldn't hear all the goddamn words. I couldn't decipher them. Let's put it that way. I could hear them, but I didn't know what the fuck they were saying. Uh, not because I don't speak proper English, the King's English, because we, here we are in England, Florida, England, but I couldn't understand the words at times. And I think that's I think that's kind of an actor thing, to be honest with you. I think these asshole actors take it for granted that they have all these fucking microphones and all this wizardry, and they don't enunciate, and they don't speak up, and maybe Nolan, you know, wants to keep their performances genuine, and he doesn't want to bring them back in the goddamn studio and degrade these fucks by doing uh, post-production audio, you know, dub-overs, whatever the fucks. But in any event, that's my only little complaint on a technical level. So I want to give the audio mix an Oscar, but I may, for other things, um, like I said, it reminded me of uh, JFK, maybe not as frenetic. How do you like that word? Frenetic, not as frenetic as JFK, but this multi-layered, multi-faceted, uh, layer upon layer of intrigue and deceit and people stabbing each other in the ass and all these wonderful things and sex and, and uh, Florence Pugh nude and all these wonderful things. Um, and regret and and uh, actors looking solemnly uh, the thousand mile stare watch this this is my Oppenheimer watch I am the destroyer of worlds Oppenheimer you destroyed the world you created the fire from God to man that killed the world how do you feel see it's just as good as seeing the movie so anyway I enjoyed it. Um, it's a movie that you feel like you should see, you have to see. Here's another reason to see in the theater, because every asshole on fucking Facebook, Insta fuck, Twitter fuck, or X fuck, everyone feels the need to post their little written reviews. Some fuck on Twitter uh, posted like, you know, some screenshot or whatever the fuck of, of uh, Olivia, what's her name? The, uh, Emily Blunt, who I'm a big fan of. Emily Blunt, like, oh, this should get Emily Blunt the Oscar right now. And so I think what they were posting was like the little, like, 30 second, one minute scene uh, where she's kind of speaking on her husband to the Jason Clark prosecutor. And I was all like, I, I needed to go to the restroom, but I held off to see that scene. And to be honest with you, 
I, I feel like that whoever Twitter fucked that, I mean, yes, it was an intense moment, but I feel like that scene needed to be two or three minutes long in order to warrant a tweet or a meme. It was like 30 seconds. It felt like we were just getting somewhere with it, but it didn't come to fruition. Maybe that's the mystery scene that I didn't get to see at the end of the credits because AMC Regency Jacksonville feels like turning the fucking credits off out of disregard and disrespect to you filmmakers. Uh, so whatever the fuck. But in any event, I enjoyed the movie. Uh, it's been a five-day journey for me. Interesting. I mean, this whole goddamn strike, writer's strike, followed by sag After. What's sag After, Mike? Screen Actors Guild dash... Oh, fuck. Uh, I believe it's American Federation Theater Radio Association? Was that it? Uh, artists? After, I always get after mixed up. Is it American Federation Theater Radio Artists? Let's go with that. After. Uh, but yeah, everyone's on strike, you know, Q in Sally Field Union. And hopefully the powers that be will say, well, gee whiz, Sound of Freedom's making all this money. Uh, whatever the fuck, you know, Oppenheimer's making this money. Barbie's making money. Maybe there's enough money to go around between the highfalutin producers and, and the world-weary actors, okay? And we don't need to put bots and AI fucks in the movies. Uh, a friend of mine, Jose Gonzalez, made a good point on the news, by the way. He said, um, you know, maybe one day AI can replace producers. They won't like that. So nice point, Jose. Uh, Jose going on uh, the news to discuss the SAG after strike. Andrea Lyman, another friend of mine, doing the same. Uh, so people are coming together. People are, you know, protesting. So anyway, um, Oppenheimer, go see the movie, you know, and, and look, assholes or people. Uh, in this movie, you don't see any AI people acting. You don't see any fucking memes acting. You see real life human beings, real life human performances. I'd say we're probably looking at best picture. And, and as the movie was, I mean, this is a long movie. This is three hours. It's still daylight here, which is nice. But I was thinking of what are my kind of top five movies of the year? My buddy over there on uh, uh, wordofdreams.com, Andrew Buckner always does his top 10 movies, his top 20. I'm just doing top five, buddy. So I'm thinking it's, it's something like this. Um, personally, just me, I'm a big fan of The Covenant. That's my number one movie of the year. Uh, I might, I think I'm still going to put Sound of Free Freedom 2. I'm going to put uh, Oppenheimer 3. I'm going to put, no, mm, this is a tough one, folks. Uh, it's really a tie. I really feel like I have to tie it. So I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put The Covenant 1. Sound of Freedom, Freedom 2. I'm actually, I'm going to be a man and give you a number three. Uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I still need to see that again before it leaves theaters. That's three. Four, I'm going to go with, uh, I think I'm going to go with Oppenheimer. And five, I'm not really sure. I think I'd like to put a horror film in that spot. But there's been so many good ones. I'm not really sure which one I would put. Because, they're, like I said, there's been so many good ones. Try to think of the good old Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. He made a big uh, donation the other day to SAG after. Thanks, Rock. Thanks for your money. Uh, but I'm trying to think. Uh, but you know, The Rock still has a lie in his book, The Rock Says, which I'm sure he didn't write. He writes that his father was the first African American intercontinental champion, but his father never was the intercontinental champion. So sorry, Rock. Your book has a fallacy in it that you didn't write. Okay? Sorry. Um, but as far as whatever the fuck. What's my fifth best movie of the year? Shit. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking Intersex was pretty good. That was a doc that I reviewed. Uh, Dad and Stepdad was pretty good. That was a comedy. I might throw that in the mix. That was good for a chuckle. It was nice to see that the gentleman in the movie, Dad and Stepdad, that played the son, uh, Branson, actually watched my review, one of 23 people that did. It's nice to know that some people actually care and, and look for the reviews and, and appreciate a good review. Uh, of course, you could do your fucking part and copy and share this URL and get me more viewers so this actually feels like I'm doing something with my life. 
uh, or you couldn't. You could just sit there and watch the review and listen to my cries and not help me, okay? Uh, you could not buy my book. You could not buy my wonderful art. You could just sit there on the goddamn whatever the fuck on your phone and just watch. Be a passive watcher like everyone else in this fucking world. Anyway, I applaud Oppenheimer. I did give it the, the nice cl soft clap at the end of the movie. Nobody really cared. I mean, I just thought it was a, a great, wonderful filmmaking. Christopher Nolan does it again. Uh, Mike Messier, go see 